Good morning, brethren, sisters, saints, church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Hello. Uh, brother, uh, we're praying for you about the devil's uh, stopping to harass you. Um, we're praying for you. Um, <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Some interesting events have happened recently here in America. Apparently, the worst of the two is Donald J. Trump. Isn't that something? And hey, for all of you, hey, look at me. Look, come here. I was wrong. Okay? I thought that they were going to catapult... Kamala Harris into the presidency. I was wrong. But you know what that means? I have I have always said that whoever is worse, worse for the country, is who the Jesuits would select as president. But, like I said, hey, for those of you, I was wrong. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I was. But also remember, I am, uh, the, the, the evidence is in the videos if you care to look. I have always said, whoever was worse for this country, this nation, is who the Jesuits would select. And Trump's in office. Now, going to be. But we will address that. We, we kind of have to. We will address that in another video, not today. Okay? So, I just wanted to acknowledge that for you. Oh, brother, I love you. Sister, saints, I love you, my brethren, my sisters. You thought I forgot, didn't you? Thought I forgot. Oh, no. Y'all got, got to understand the, the situation here. Health is declining and the situation is declining. Things are getting worse. So be patient with your servants. Okay? Be patient with your servants. Please. Please. But you thought I forgot, didn't you? No. No, no, no. I did not ask you, brother, because I you, you don't care. You don't care about this. I mean, me agree. Besides, it was a short email. Question, I was asked by a beloved, by a beloved brother, a beloved son, Christ Jesus. Quote, how do we find our purpose, our role in the church, our spiritual gifts? Well, number one, our, our spiritual gifts, or with like, Yours truly, <laughs> spiritual gift. It's those kind of things are like, <coughs> you know, they're like, whoa, get kind of revealed to you, as it were. Because remember, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Okay? All right? Because you remember, those who boast of a false gift are like clouds without rain. Okay, or wind without rain or whatever it is. Okay. Um, our spiritual gifts that the Lord and the Lord does give spiritual gifts unto the saints. Yes, he does. So we've got a got a lot of scripture to prove that. But for the saint, it will be revealed through putting our faith into action, you know, having our senses exercised. By use, okay? All right? Um, it will be revealed to us in time. And we're going to address that in a way here uh, a little later on. And our role in the church. And we're not going to go on about how there he put some apostles, preachers, teachers, and that kind of stuff. We've covered that. That will be in the description box. The video called to preach. The three-part video. Uh, part, three parts of witnessing. Will be in the description box. Where we cover all that. Our role in the church. Well number one. Every single one of us. 
Every single saint, every saint is in the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? Even, yes, you sisters are in the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? Showing unto the world, unto the lost, how the Lord reconciled us unto himself by the way we serve him. Okay? All right? We are all in that capacity of the uh, ministry of reconciliation. Okay? The problem comes when people try to go into areas such as women preachers. Okay? That, that no, no. The male, the men are to be the ones that do the preaching, the teaching, and stuff like that. Okay? We are all in the ministry of reconciliation. But as far as what the Lord has called you to do, remember what the Lord said to Peter. When Peter's like, Lord, what will this guy do? And the Lord said, if I will, he tarry till I come. What's that to thee? Follow thou me. And I'll show it to you. Okay? Example. Lord took, <laughs> the Lord allowed everything to be taken away for your servant here. I lost my job several years ago at that, at that um, secular pizza place, which is now closed, ironically. Okay? Um, I wouldn't play ball. I wouldn't put on the diaper. I, I, I was uh, quite obstinate about it. <laughs> I really was. I wasn't, I wasn't going to bow down to Sosa's feet. And um, I was left really no other option. I mean, I could have rejected. I could have gone on still, but, oh, Lord, what would have become? Hmm? But it was one of those things where it's like, okay, everything else was taken away. You really want me to do this, don't you? Hmm? You really want me to do this? See, son, your role in the church, it's not your role. You know that. You know that. You do. But the Lord will reveal it to you. But see, you got to get out of the boat, son. You got to get out of the boat. You got to take the chance. I, I praise the Lord. I understand your reservation. Praise God for it. I, I wish a couple of these jerks out here would have even a tenth of that reservation. Because we're all going to, you know, these people on YouTube here who preach to heresy, like that idiot, that, uh, that uh, uh, open-air preacher, Scott, okay? I think of that poor guy. And I say that ch charitably, okay? The guy's saying that you don't have, it's not your faith, it's the faith of Jesus. And still being allowed to uh, reign supreme on the one dude's channel. Must be giving that guy quite a bit of money. See, that's the thing, though. See, that's the thing. It's the glorification of self that makes the difference. And the ultimate thing, which we are going to, because you know, son, we the the, the um, our role in the church, our spiritual gifts, we that those are covered in uh, the other videos. How do we find our purpose? How do we find our purpose? Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Read along with me. You know why. Yeah, because I, I make mistakes. I make mistakes. I'm, I'm not... Hey, hey, one dude who commented on the last video and called the open-air preacher a righteous man. And I am a wretched man. I am a wretched man. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? All right? All right? Again, any of you people who are willfully deceived, by open air preacher, you deserve what you get, and I have no pity for you. Go ahead and follow him to hell. 
Go right ahead. I've got no pity for you. If you are willfully believing that imbecile, okay, willfully, I, I have no pity for you. I have no sympathy for you, okay? All right? Again, sleazy believists, them scoundrels, can refute open-air preacher easily, okay? And free gracers are scripturally illiterate, okay? I, all right, and they can refute that guy. But anyway, anyway, sorry about that, brother, sister. Read along with me. I make mistakes. I am fallible. I am fallible, as if you haven't noticed, okay? I make mistakes. I skip grooves sometimes. My mouth goes quicker than my brain. See, you need to be a Berean. You need to search the scriptures daily whether these things were so. Okay? Whether these things are so. Excuse me. Okay? Don't! Trust me. Don't trust me. Don't. Please. <laughs> Why? I make mistakes. I'm fallible, okay? And you know what? I'm not going to do things to gratify your flesh. I'm not going to pick... Trendy topics amongst Christianity to bolster up subscribers to the 70,000 mark. Yes. Yes. More on that later. Okay? Don't trust me. Trust this. Trust this. Please. But Acts chapter 5, 33 on 40. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them, the apostles who just kind of refuted them. Okay? The unlearned and ignorant in the eyes of the Pharisees. You no, know, Peter, Jan James, and John, you know. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before the days rose up Thaddeus, before these days rose up Thaddeus, Boasting himself to be somebody. Boasting himself to be somebody. In the community section, there's this short video that I put in there, uh, which I thought was very amusing. There was some guy from another country. It's like, nobody has the power that I have. I, I have no one in America has the power that I have. And if uh, something, if that's not true, may the Lord strike me. And then something in the background falls on him and he collapses. And I'm, just, I'm just sorry, the guy probably got some major injuries. But he's like, uh, you know, if I'm lying, then the Lord strike me. And the Lord did. <laughs> they came down and smacked him and he went through the, sta uh, the stage. And all you hear him do is, oh, <laughs> okay. But he boasted himself to be somebody. Yeah, I got a lot of these YouTubers boasting themselves to be somebody. Don't oh we know we all know that. Okay. How can you tell? They're both I feel like Paul. I've been, you know, years and 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 years. Okay. Oh, so many people were saved by my ministry or or <laughs> <laughs> did, what, did, do you really need to be doing that? Even under duress, do you really need to be doing that? Doth not the body of evidence speak for itself? But yet, you, people need to this have this thing. Boast himself to be somebody. See, that, see that's one of the things, son. We're nobody. We're nobody. And a problem that happens with these Christians in their longevity 
They get too familiar. They get too blasé almost. They, the been there, done that mentality. Okay? We have experience as saints, but we are not to put our experiences as badges to be boasted about. And this is a Sam Spit. Oh, oh, that you if you ever heard that guy before, yeah, well, long ago he was pretty decent, but the longer that guy goes, the worse he gets. That, see, this this is something. This is something within Christianity. This is. It seems the longer these guys go, the more pompous they get. Now, we are to have confidence in the Lord. Yes, we are. But again, our, our things that the Lord uses us for are not to be merit badges to be paraded around and rubbed in people's faces. Okay? All right? Boast themselves to be somebody. Makes me sick. I don't ever want to be like that. This same brother who this video is a response on to, bless his heart, he is one who, like, if he sees in me even a hint of that, that brother get right on it. <laughs> so will other brethren. Of course, Alexander B. Hartley is like, a hey, brother, you know, you ever see any of these characteristics or traits in me at any time that we see in other people from out like Northeast, okay? Uh Get on me. Rebuke me. Yet, please. I can't. I don't want to be a been there, done that individual. I don't. And that scares you, brother. I know it does. Because you, know, you got your head on right. Okay? Well, let's continue here. For before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, the only scriptural reference unto the uh, Maccabean revolt, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all as many as, and all even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. Here's a little fun fact. Okay, the Catholics, the Catholics in the Apocrypha, okay, this, this uh, set of scriptures has the Apocrypha in it, that's why I'm showing it to you, okay, uh, this is the authorized version of the scriptures, but the Apocrypha is sandwiched between the Old and the New, the Apocrypha is not inspired scripture, by the way, because it contradicts the established canon of scripture, and plus, the Apocrypha is where Catholicism gets about 90 to 95 or 98 percent of their doctrine okay okay but see here's the thing the apocrypha will tell you that the maccabee books one to four even are inspired but yet right here in the scripture the Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, the Maccabean revolts, what said the scripture? And drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. So what does that mean? The Maccabean thing was, some, uh, especially Judas here, uh, was not of God. Because Gamaliel is using it in comparison of those who in flesh do things. But when they die, their memory, their hatred, their love, their envy, all die with them. It wasn't of the Lord. See? Keep that up. You, you, you Catholics out there who say, well, the Apocrypha is inspired scripture. And that's where you get a majority of your doctrine. And you go to the Maccabean revolts, uh, books about, you know, prayers for the dead and alms for the dead. Yeah. Uh, the scripture's like, that. no, <laughs> no. The Maccabean revolt happened. That is historically accurate, and Scripture even does reference it. But only one time, and look at the context in which it is mentioned. Put, put that in your book, huh? Let's continue. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will, it will come to naught, sooner or later. 
some more later. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the, the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Hmm. Hmm. Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. Well, how do you know if it is of God? Well, Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 on the 22. Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 on to 22. Not 19. Now this is prophecy about the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? But we are reading this for instruction in righteousness. Okay? Because of the latter parts of this context. The Lord thy God will rise, raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. Of thy brethren like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Of course, this is obviously a reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ, who is not only God the Father, but he was also just happened to be a prophet as well. Okay? <laughs> Come on. Easy. All right? According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. They added a fear of the Lord. Okay? And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my, and look at this, I, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. See, there are how many times, oh wow, there are things that in notes and videos that I thought were going, you know, I thought were going to be done and then go to press the button and the Lord's like, no. But look, no, I don't want you to speak that. I don't want you to speak on that stuff. I want you to do that. I'm, and then he guides you into another direction. Okay? All right? You don't get so banked on a concept until it's brought to fruition. And see, the Lord has allowed in videos that he has given me to do, errors to happen. Why? To keep me humble. Okay? I got a pride problem, dude. If I, if the Lord, number one, <laughs> doesn't allow my consequences to catch up to me and give me a thorn in the flesh, if the Lord didn't uh, put into my life brethren who actually care about me, I could become as pompous, as pompous, and as conceited as the guy from out northeast. I could be. And I, I, can't, I don't want that. I can't be like that. Okay? I will raise, verse 18, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Obviously, plain as today, <coughs> even the heretical devil sleazy believers could get this one right. This is obviously a prophecy speaking, making reference unto Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. Verse 20. But the prophet, now look, lowercase p, okay, and in verse 18, capital case p. Don't, don't miss that. Don't miss that. Don't, okay? The words are important. Capitalization, punctualization, even though <laughs> I mess up on that quite often. Uh, praise the Lord, I got a brother who's very detail oriented about that and be like, Brad, okay, okay, <laughs> all right. Praise the Lord, okay? But don't skip past the, you know, in verse 18, you have a capital P prophet. And here in verse 20, a lowercase p prophet. But the prophet which shall 
presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Other gods, such as yourselves, other gods. See, for someone to deceive Christians, which I am not, I'm not a Christian. You're saved, you're a saint. Don't fix yourself to the world. Okay? But see, they can't openly say, you know, boast about another God, but how do they do it veilly? In a veiled way, excuse me. Well, simple. Just believe and receive. What's the agent there? You. You just believe and you just receive. You have the cookie. Should we go through the whole thing again? Okay. Have the cookie. You have the cookie. Okay. <laughs> you stop saying. <laughs> stupid. 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 You're black. Therefore, you're elect. Okay. You have the gift of this and that. And you bu So, but how do they... How do they do this in a veiled way? Huh? How do they do this in a veiled way? Speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Other gods. Yourselves. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Now, question. Did Christ Jesus die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scripture and shed his blood on the cross before at this time? No. They were not looking forward to the cross, Okay. Number one, there is a dispensational difference because the established canon of Scripture was not completely written yet at this time. Obviously. Okay? Obviously. Okay? Okay? But for us today, we speak of the things of the Lord through the Scripture. And the things that are in Scripture will come to pass. But you see these guys, these charismatics, these free gracers and all these guys lying to you. Uh, the what, uh, simplest one is the got to stop sinning. Okay, that idiot. Uh, open air preacher. You can't stop sinning. Okay, you can't do that. Okay, but he presumes to speak in the name of other gods. Other gods who? Themselves. Look at me. I stop sinning. Blah, blah, blah. See? See how that works? See, when constant self-exhortation comes out in the preaching and they speak uh, popular topics just to inflate numbers and to pacify people, please men. When a prophet, verse 22, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. And at, go to 2 uh, Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. I know what you're thinking about, brother. We're going to get to Deuteronomy 13 in a second. Okay? We are. Okay? 2 Corinthians 11, uh, 10, 10, 11 on to verse 18. I'm in 1 Corinthians. I thought that looked a little weird. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 10. 11 on to verse 18. <clears throat> Let such a one think this, that such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. Walking the talk. I've talked to you about this on many occasions. I don't believe a majority of these people on YouTube, if you were to meet them personally, the one that you see on the camera wouldn't be the one that you see outside of it. 
Okay, I believe that with the guy from Maine. I believe that with uh, um, especially uh, not Kent Helvin because I think his arrogance just pro protrudes through the camera. But with all these guys, okay, majority of them, Kim Breaker, uh, MacArthur, uh, what's that other whack job? Um, uh, Comfort, uh, uh, Washer, uh, and all these all these guys, they have a persona. They're playing a character. Okay? I don't believe that the ones with a lot of these guys that you see here is the one you're going to meet. Okay? I tell you, the one that you see is the one you're going to meet. Okay? All right? But see, let such a one think this, that such as we are in word by letters when we are absent... Such will we be also indeed when we are present. You don't put on your preaching voice. You, you don't, uh, you know. Yes, I do get that um, heated in daily things uh, when talking about our Father. Yes, I do. I get like that. Okay, The one you see here is the one you're going to meet in person. How is that with the other guys? I doubt it. And right here, for we dare not make ourselves of the number. Make yourselves of the number. King James Bible believing Christianity is just now another denomination. And you work to have it so. You. You worked to have it so. The word of God will not be popular amongst the world, amongst the lost. It is precious in the eyes of the saint. But trying to make it popular so that the numbers may be increased out of fleshly means? Hmm. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. I feel like Paul for all the people I led to the Lord. Because of my ministry, I've got so this and that. And that. Make me sick. What are you doing? What are you doing? What's, what's, what's the balance that you're weighing things in, man? Come on. We all know. Even our, the enemies of Christ know. That's why they're so successful. Because they do it better than those who think that they're actually doing something for the Lord. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Like the Lord said to Peter. You know, if I will that guy tarries until I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Like, never mind. Okay? I'm not going to compare myself to another brother. Okay? Why? Because I got my own stuff. I'm, you know? My own stuff. Okay? And don't compare yourselves to me. Don't. Okay? Don't. What do you compare yourself to? Come on. We know the answer. Okay. Well, Paul said, be ye followers of me. Follow what he did. Yes, he gave you the example. <laughs> you gonna do, are you serious? And there are these Christians out there who say, you, you know, I've heard it. I feel like Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. <clears throat> kind of the, the flint comes up, you know. <laughs> yeah, I compare myself to Paul. Yeah, I have a pride problem, just like Paul did. Okay? He said to be followers of me in his doctrine and in his, the way that he served the Lord. Okay? Notice in Scripture, Paul never said to do exactly as I do, meaning do it the way I was doing it. Here's my example. Okay, and his example is scripture. Okay? 
But we dare, but we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Not boasting of things without our measure. What were they boasting? The gospel of Christ. What the Lord did through them. Well, not what they did through the Lord. See, we as saints, son, we are to, to boast, yes, the Lord through us. I can't believe, I, you know, at the time of this recording, there are like a lot of subscribers to this channel. I've, I've talked about that before, I'm not going to, okay? Um, that, that's humbling and that's intimidating to me, okay? I don't want lots of, I don't want big numbers and stuff like that, okay? The Lord is the one who does these things. The Lord is the one that approves. The Lord is the one who uses a worthless, useless piece of meat, a sinner who is chief. The Lord has done amazing things through a vessel that shouldn't even be breathing. See, you boast the Lord through you. What happens with Christians? I feel like Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. Thousands of people have been saved by my ministry. See, boasting themselves through the Lord. There is a huge difference. It's a subtle difference, but it is a huge difference. Easy believers are actually pretty a good example of the latter. They boast themselves from what for what their God Satan has done. I'm free to do whatever I want because I just believe. Hey, the more I sin, the better it is for me. See, they're boasting themselves through their God, little G God, Satan. They don't even have the right God. They're lost. But that's an example. They boast themselves through their God, Satan. Okay? But not boasting of things without our measure. Our measure. <laughs> Dude. There, and there are some out there that think this. Do you really? You, there, are the, there, there are. You really believe that I am capable of doing the things that have come through this which the Lord has given me? The Lord is the one who has appointed. The Lord is the one who has given strength. The Lord is the one who has given things in the head. Okay? If it wasn't for the Lord, we wouldn't be speaking to each other. That is of other men's labor. Not boasting of things without our measure. That is of other men's labors. But having hope. When your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in, other man, in another man's line of things made ready at our hand. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord. I feel like Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. <laughs> you you hear about jerk hiles. Fifteen thousand were saved today. Well, how? Yeah, right. Or thousands have been saved through my ministry. The hundreds of thousands that have been saved because of my ministry. Your ministry. And it is. It is your ministry. Well, Paul said that under duress, yes. And what did he do? What did Paul say about that when he did 
Finally, you want to, want to boast about things in the flesh? I can do it too. But what did Paul say? He likened it unto what? I speak as a fool. Foolishness. Yes, Paul did. It's like, yeah, I've done these things. You, you've compelled me, huh? You want me to speak like you, like a fool? Okay. But see, that's, see, that's the thing a lot of these guys won't acknowledge. Paul calls it foolish. What does it mean to be a fool? Fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Capital G. But see, the fool, there is a God themselves. Little G. See how that works? Now, in Deuteronomy 18, we saw about how the Lord said, if the thing come to pass, that's the thing that I've said. If it hasn't, then that's not what I have said. In Deuteronomy 13, <laughs> there for some, and I've dealt with this on quite a few occasions. In Deuteronomy 13, at the first glance, for someone who doth not know, you would might you would say that well see that's a contradiction. But let's examine it. Ooh, what a coincidence. Self-examination. Deuteronomy 13, because we read in Deuteronomy 18 that, you know, which is, of course, a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? But we see in Deuteronomy 18 that if the thing that the prophet speaks, if it comes to pass, that's the thing that the Lord has ordained, that's the thing that the Lord has said. We saints, we speak through the scripture. The scripture is right every time. Okay? But see, you got these devils out there who will put forth things of the world. Things fleshly. Deuteronomy 13, 1 through 11. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, look at the word prophet, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. And the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods. Other gods. Now this was referencing, obviously, dispensational difference, and this is for our instruction in righteousness. Little other gods, like Tammuz and whatever and whatnot, but for our instruction in righteousness, let us go and worship. Let us go after other gods. Ye shall be as gods. Hmm. Comparing themselves among themselves. Hmm. Ye shall be as gods. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay? Which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or the dream or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And just like with the thing with Abraham, uh, the atheist people especially, and a lot of Christians will come to this, like, see, the Lord doesn't know everything because he's proving them to see whether or not he can. No. The Lord knows the beginning from the end. How many of these people out there can boast? Like Peter. Though all the world deny thee. Yet I won't. I am ready to die with thee. And then three times. He denies the Lord. Atrociously. Atrociously. Excuse me. And then to top it all off. The Lord looked. Oh, can you imagine? Now, if anyone can say, I told you so, the Lord could do that. He told Peter, For the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And what happened? He boasted so greatly, so much bravada, you know. What would you do? You know, this, that's a good one for this video. What would you do, you know? Like, I was asked by a brother, it's like, you know, what would we, uh, I think it was you, brother, who asked that question. It's like, you know, 
What would we have done in the Garden of Eden? I don't know. It would be easy for us to say, well, I wouldn't have done that knowing what we know now. But at that moment, I don't know how, what I would have done. Okay? So see, the prove proveth you. Proveth you. It doesn't say prove to him. Proveth you. Who is he proving what to? Whether you yourself. You claim you love the Lord. Well, what sets you off? Worldly things? Yes, worldly things can do that. But you, you know what I'm saying. See, the proving there is not the Lord. No. See, if that was the Lord needing to be proven to what his people were going to do, then he doesn't know everything. And if we are serving a God who doesn't know the beginning from the end, why are we serving him? Okay? Come on. Come on. Use a little common sense there. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Yes. Like when um, I remember a couple years ago when a certain devil from England got exposed that he was a devil, it was in this way because he was counting on Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. He was he was deceiving people by because he could robotically say that. Okay, but then when he got totally explo exposed and then exploded in a tirade of uh, profanity himself, which I still got the evidence to prove, um, it was trying to turn people away from the Lord. What was his confidence himself? And see. These heretics, like open air preacher, like the uh, sleazy believers, want to take your dependence away from the Lord and place it upon you. So the Lord will allow things like this to happen to prove to yourself whether you truly ah. If that'll happen, I'll I'll, I'll surely stay strong in the Lord. Surely, I'd never be like Peter. Okay? I'd never do that. Oh, yeah, would you, huh? Satan, the accuser of the brethren. Skin for skin, yea. Touch his bones and his flesh. He will curse thee to thy face. See, one is confident in the Lord. The other is confident in the flesh. We as saints have no confidence in this. The false, even though they talk a good game, you can whittle that down to a boasting, a bravada in flesh. If thy brother, the son of thy mother or the son or thy son or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known. Thou were thy fathers. Thy brother, thy mother, thy son, thy daughter, or thy wife, or thy friend. Hmm. He who does not pick up his cross and follow me daily is not worthy of me. See, the Lord is to be first in our lives. But see, when you put precedent on others, we are to serve others, yes, but in our personal lives, our dealing first is the Lord. The Lord comes first. And that's the way it is with saints. The Lord is right. If a brother is wrong in something and we as saints show that brother or sister and they continue on in that thing, we're like, okay, the Lord is right, you're wrong. 
What's your priority? What's your priority? Boasting yourself or boasting flesh? See? Namely, the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thine eye pity him. Neither shalt thou spare. Neither shalt thou conceal him. Mortify, therefore, the deeds of the flesh. Mortify. Kill. Put down. Morte. Morta. Dead. Kill. And thou shalt stone. Oh, but thou shalt surely kill him. Wait, 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 wait. Where did I skip something? Let's do it verse 8 again. Okay? Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eye, thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And we don't do this today because vengeance belongeth unto the Lord. Okay? Under this dispensation it was faith and works eternal security was not there okay the lord will repay okay that's why we're not doing this actually today to the false okay but what we do is we disassociate we put away we kill that in that fashion like you're dead to me i, I i'm not gonna listen don't want to hear your heresy go okay morte mortify dead Dead to you. Uh, you know, sinless perfection. Dead. Go away. Free grace. Dead. Go away. Okay? King James Bible believing Christianity. Dead. Go away. Okay? And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die. Because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God. And that's what all the heretics do. Sinless prophet, that uh, uh, open air preacher, I don't sin anymore. Okay? He's lying, he's full of pride, and he's calling himself a god. Okay? We've proven that. I'm not doing another video on that jerk. Okay? Sleazy believest. I'm saved because I just believe. What saves them? Their belief themselves. Okay? The Catholic. I was confirmed. I had the cookie. I did a, co a good confession. I. Okay? I. The false take want to thrust you away from the Lord who is Jesus Christ. And have your dependence in flesh. Ye, O oh ye foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Huh? Are you made perfect now by the things of the flesh? Very simple, okay? And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. Second Corinthians 13. See, the Lord will allow these things to happen. Not that he needs to know, because he already does, but that you. See, we can our pride, man's pride, unlike Sam Spit. Excuse me. <coughs> See, our pride can deceive us. Look at Paul. Okay? The Lord didn't want him going to Jerusalem. And Paul gladly would have died and all that, but the Lord didn't want him going to Jerusalem. He warned him. He even said, the Holy Ghost warns, uh, you know, a lot of trouble is going to come to me. But he went anyway. Okay? There is a lot of scriptural evidence to tell us that the Lord didn't want Paul to go to Jerusalem. Paul did anyway. Okay? The Lord used that 
for his glory. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, yes, he did. But the Lord didn't want it to work that way. But it worked that way because the Lord was the one who was the guiding in that. Okay? But, like I said, the Lord clearly didn't want him to go that way. And see, when you, as the, you get the hotshot Christian, you know, you know, my ministry, I feel like Paul, you know, I've been doing this for years, blah, 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 and, you know. See, when you get too strung up on yourself, because pride, and the Lord allows something to deceive you, he allows it. Why? What? What is the thing that's going on there? Second Corinthians 13? Yeah, brother. 3 on 8. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you, to you word is not weak, but mighty in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. And Christ is the power of God. Okay? Come on. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. <coughs> and what is the power of God to the saint? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? God the Father is our power, our hope, our life, of the blessed hope, the redemption. He is everything. Okay? But when something comes around, you get you can see you gotta be careful with the boasting. You got well, I, you know, I, 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 me, me, me. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, what is your faith in? <laughs> I don't sin anymore. Oh please, shut up. Go to hell. I just believe. Oh, you go, girlfriend. I have the cookie. Don't, you know, don't scarf that down so fast you don't want to choke. Hmm? I speak in tongues. And yeah, sound like the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> no coincidence there. Or, you know, I'm special. I'm one of God's chosen people because of the color of my skin. And you've called me racist, huh? Hmm. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in, is in you, except ye be reprobates? See, Christianity, Christ isn't in Christianity. He isn't. Okay, come on. The, the name Christ, Christian, okay? <laughs> okay? Sure. But Jesus Christ himself, he ain't involved in that. Give me a break. If he were, why is Christ divided? Now that happens because of fleshly things. Yes, it does. And it's an unfortunate reality. But, you know, one of the biggest evidences which ought to be onto you that Christianity is not what it claims to be is that the divided body of Christianity. And why you wanted to make a denomination to be part of that? Because you want to boast yourselves. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. Now, we see reprobates mentioned twice, and brother, you know this, okay? You don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, dwelling within you. You're reprobate. But right here, though we be as reprobates, what does that mean? Christianity refers to saints as reprobates because we're preaching division you don't have love God loves everybody unconditionally no <laughs> no <laughs> no 
No, he does not. <laughs> okay? No, he does not. Everybody's going to be saved eventually. <laughs> no, no, they are not. Okay? <laughs> no, they are not. All right? Everybody's a, a believer in Christ. They just don't know. No, they are not. Okay? And see, when saints speak contrary, that's Christianity. That's Christianity. You atheists know that. Saints know that. Hmm. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. you got to remember, just because someone um, glorifies the authorized version of the scriptures, don't mean that they're a saint. It doesn't. Okay? Uh, we did we did that we covered that in the video about Brandon and his wonderful video that he did uplifting the scripture but like uh, like I've said about dear young Brandon I don't trust that guy and I would not go as far as to call him my brother okay did great work on this uh, uh, the scripture issue yes he did Yes, he did. But there again, I, I wouldn't go as far as to call that man a brother. Okay? All right? Anyway. Now, see, what happens is, the difference is, we saints seek to glorify the Lord through us, while the opposite, the false, glorify themselves through the Lord. And then you run into Matthew 23. Matthew 23, verses 4 on to 7. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. That open-air preacher guy. Okay? Catholics, the Jesuits, do all these Hail Marys full of graces, and then you'll be resolved of your sin or whatever. Okay? When the, all the while, they don't do any of that stuff. Okay? <laughs> but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men. Rabbi! Rabbi, I love the praises of men more than the praises of God. A true saint is going to be hated. But see, when you get involved in Christianity and create create a denomination uh, within that realm of that which is not, what are you appealing to? Well, we are to persuade men. Yes, how do we do that? Through Scripture. Amen. But does that mean that we put them as the focal point to dictate as what we are going to say? Well, the brother asked a question. It's like, okay, Lord, do you want me to speak about this? Do you want me to speak about this? You want? Do you want one of these? <laughs> you got to leave me and guide me, Lord. Okay, Galatians 6, Galatians 6, Galatians 6, 12 on 15. And this, what we're about to read, totally the free graces. And like the disciples of the uh, that open air preacher, twofold more the child of hell than themselves. Okay. Galatians 6, 12 on to 15. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh. Fair shoe in the flesh. By emulating the guy from Maine. Looking like him. Talking like him. Moving like him. Having the same inflections. Uh, also, the, just the way the guy pronounced the things. 
identical. But like I said, you must be giving that guy a lot of money because he hasn't done anything about you. <laughs> not funny. Anyway, as many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cause of Christ. See, look at me. Look at what I've done. Don't want to. Don't want to turn that measure in on themselves. They don't want to examine themselves. But they think, hey, see, see, see. Look at what I've done. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Look at the numbers. Huh? Look at all the people that I've led to the Lord. Look at how many of the thousands that have been saved by my ministry. Okay? <coughs> I don't know. Well, I, I know of a handful, literally. A handful of people who the Lord got a hold of to anything that he has given your servant. I don't want to know otherwise. Why? Look at the guy at north, out northeast. Look at the Gene Kims. Look at the Robert Breakers. Look at the John MacArthur's. What's the common denominator there with those guys? I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. And all the while, it's funny, is it, you know, they're claiming the Lord does, but see, that's the dividing line. Okay? No glory to me. But see, when they boast their glory, it, they're boasting themselves through the Lord as the saint boasts the Lord through themselves. There's a big difference. And you know, brother, I know, I know that scares you. I know that scares you. Praise the Lord for it. Maybe you just got to get out of the boat, son. God, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Helpless on the cross. Your hands are nailed. Your feet are nailed. You're butt naked. Okay? On a cross. Death. You have nothing. You can do nothing. That's the significance of of the cross. Okay? That's the significance of it. When they were nailed on the cross, they had nothing. They lost everything. Hands and feet impaled. And gravity pulling down and suffocation. They could throw filth at you, dung, tomatoes, cabbage, whatever. Mock you. Everything was out of your hands. But see, when it's in your hands, and see, that's what the fake want to do. They want to take it out of the hands of God and put it in their hands. And see, son, that's how you'll come to know. Get out the boat, okay? And if the thing come to pass... And time is a uh, deciding factor as well. But ultimately, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Again, I, I, I'm amazed that, you know, Change life gospel. Change life gospel. Dude. <laughs> what is the catalyst of your change life? Yes. You're a new creature. Your life is going to change. But remember. Remember. 
Alcoholics have a changed life. And their higher power, as they say, could be a stinking doorknob. What is the catalyst to the changed life? Christ in you, God the Father? You know, the, the Holy Ghost and Lord is that spirit? Or your own will, the worshiping of your own will. And with Christianity, it's the latter. Okay? Second Peter. These are familiar verses, but again, again, how do you know your role in the church? And for you, son, I, I, uh, I think you already know. I, I think you, I, I do. I love you very, very much. If ever I could have had a son. But uh, I think you already know the answer. But this is not, this is not, this is for the body of Christ. 2 Peter chapter 2, 17 under 20. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity. Again, the sleazy believists are culprits of this. They use all these fancy technical words. There's nothing wrong with that. But see, again, they do that in place of something that isn't there. Okay? It's, it's words without substance. Okay? And the substance that's supposed to be there isn't. Okay, there ain't nothing wrong with having a um, ain't excuse me, ain't nothing wrong with having a good vocabulary. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, a lot of especially the free gracers, they do that in place of the Lord who isn't there to give off the appearance that they are of the Lord and they're not. Okay, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh. Who doesn't want to hear? Hey, just believe and receive, and you can go on sinning. Hey, the more you sin, the better it is for you. Hey, we're not even under the morality of the law. We're under grace. So, hey, grace is our license to sin. <coughs> you don't know what the grace of God is, boy. Grace to you is a license to sin. You guys are filth, period. God loves you. But what do they do? They allure through the lust of the flesh. Son! <laughs> when we speak to the lost, it irritates them. Why? Because we speak through the Spirit and the sword of the Spirit. That's prophesying today. See, this is prophesying today. The Lord in me is speaking to you through his word. That's prophesying today. Unlike the Pentecostal charismatics who, you know, are revealing extra scriptural revelation. And it's usually, nine out of ten times, contrary to scripture. And it always begins with an aspect of not rightly dividing the word of truth. Like these guys is like saying, uh, you know, uh, the things in Revelation are happening today. And, wh and what's that thing, brother? Uh, Psalm 83, I think it is. <laughs> Dude, Psalm 83 doctrinally has nothing to do with us today, okay? That's talking about future things for Israel, okay? I think it's Psalm 83. One brother, you know, brought that up about people like to go to that, these guys that he checks out every once in a while. It's like, dude, 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 no, no. Instruction and righteousness, yes, but that has nothing to do with us, okay? <laughs> All right? For when they speak great swelling words of vanity... They allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live, live, live in error. You know, error is like dog dung. You step in it and it's like, ah! You know, and you try to wipe your foot off and, then, you know, you think you get in, and then you get home, you take your shoes off, then you're over there by the kitchen. It's like, what's that? It's, oh, I thought I got it all. But see, those who live, like Brother Alexander in that one video he did, um, I no longer live there. I no longer live there. No longer, longer live there. Big part of my that down. Okay? Great video that the Lord gave him. Okay? Oh, I lost my place. Pick your part. Okay? 
Uh, where, where is uh, 2 Peter 2, 17 on the 20, okay? Verse 19. While they promised them liberty. Liberty. Uh, liberty and charity are not the same thing. There's charity and liberty and liberty and charity. But they themselves are two polar opposite things. And one individual got severely punished because he tried to make them mean one and the same thing to justify worship of the Roman Catholic Helladay. You looking at me? <coughs> and you and your buddy, Mr. Uh, Dudley Do-Right, you go on. You go on. And then... But don't be surprised when you two end up at the Great White Throne. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through... Uh, wait, wait, let's, uh, verse 19. While they promise them liberty, excuse me, they themselves are the servants of corruption. They promised them liberty. Promised them to be free. See, the liberty that free grace gives you is the liberty from God. Free to do as you please without any worry because of something you did. The liberty they offer you is freedom from God and the peace that they offer you is peace with sin. Because, hey, you're not under law. You're under grace. Hey, we can continue in sin that grace may abound. That's exactly what they do. And, huh, and what? They are servants of corruption. For whom a man of o is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge, just up in the head, of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. And of course, what do you do in this part, brother? What do you do? We read that. Where, where do you go? Where do you go? Always keep this in your mind. Always. Romans 6, 16. Know ye not? that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or, or, be, or of obedience unto righteousness. When flesh is your deciding factor, it becomes obvious. You do things that um, pacify people. Topics that there's no relating with. Only a select people within Christianity, those who are well off, you know, the words we speak ought to be the ones of the Lord that cover all. There are certain things, yes, that we delegate, that are delegated to uh, specific things, yes. But see, this, this cuts you. But when you're doing something just to gain the following, just to speak of popular topics of what you think people want to hear, you, you're, you're way out of the way, man. See, the whole thing is here. This is what this is about. The scriptures. And I'll be damned if I'm going to speak things just to make you happy. You know why? Because then it would be me who's doing it. James, and see right here. Right here, James 3. James 3. This, this scares the hell out of me. This scares the hell out of me. And again, I wish there were some out there who this would scare also. Because see, I'm going to give an account of every single thing I've ever taught you. At the judgment seat of Christ, I'm going to give an account for everything I've said, everything I've taught. That's why, and 
brother, I, I understand. <laughs> He's like, it's just, you know, that's why as a saint who has been called to this position, um, when brethren, like, Brad, <laughs> we need to talk. It's like, oh, you're right. Okay, that's why you love and appreciate when the brethren be like, Brad, you, you, you said, come on, let's get the scriptures. You see it? It's like, oh, dude. Oh, dude. This scares the hell out of me. But see, people take it upon themselves to put themselves up front because they want the glory. They want the 70,000 subscribers. They want to be just like him. Hey, he does it. I could do it too. Oh well, yeah, if you look at it like that, and you take it upon yourself. But see, you got to remember. Verses 1 on to verse 8. You could go ahead and read the whole chapter if you want. But we're just going to read on to verse 8. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. A defensive measure. Well, I never called myself a master. If you're in this position, um, preaching and teaching the word of God... Okay, no, you're not a master, but people are being instructed through the Lord, through you. <clears throat> Hence, you've got to be careful. That's why these, especially that news unit, Despicable Pig, and all the free gracers who have no control of profanity. <laughs> and they're claiming to be serving the actual father. They're not. They're, they're Trinitarians anyway. But I mean. For in many things we offend all. Except. You know open air preacher. And all his deluded disciples. If any man offend not in word. The same is a perfect man. And able also to bridle the whole body. Hmm. Not even Paul could do that. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire. Oh, come on. Let's do some examination there, brethren. How often has your mouth... Oh. I've brought, I've brought people to tears with my mouth. In the wrong premise. I've been in situations where would, I would have preferred someone just punch me than the abuse that they would lay on you with their mouth, their tongue. You know, you get punched in the face, sooner or later the bruise is going to heal. But see, <laughs> thy word is truth. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Huh? Huh? See, Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, that's a body, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Mm. Yeah. See, a physical bruise will heal. The tongue, those wounds can take a long time, maybe not even ever heal. And see, we saints, when we speak the word of God onto others who gnash on their teeth, uh, with their teeth, and they have their heart cut. See, nothing cuts harder, nothing bashes harder, nothing hits harder than the word of God. But the tongue of men some of men can also do damage. And then the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. 
so is the tongue also our, among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. Meaning, you can read that in Genesis, the Lord gave man the predominance over all the creation. Okay? Man is the only one who has a soul. Okay? But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. See, I make mistakes. I'm not infallible. Scripture is infallible, but I am fallible. Okay? You drop a couch on my toe, I might use profanity, unfortunately. I get angry, I could tear you apart with my words. I get my little tootsie stepped on, I could I could be vile with my words. Unless I use uh, a special method of um, of education to conceal them. Yeah. Euphemistic language. See we're going to give an account for everything we have ever said. That scares you, brother. Praise the Lord. It scares the hell out of me. But you know, remember, Lord ain't forcing anything on anybody. Unlike what that Dudley Do-Right guy says. Okay? That's Calvinism. Veiled form of Calvinism. Um, Got to get out of the boat. And if you do something and it proves to be of yourself, oh, the Lord's going to show you. Might take a little time. The Lord's going to show you. It's like, whoa, I'm not going to do that again. But see, you got to get out of the boat sooner or later. But see, also, too, again, in Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23. <laughs> I, I, again. Again. I'm sorry, I don't want to be well known. I don't want all these subscribers. Thank you to those of you who do. Thank you again. I don't, I don't want to be big. We're saints. We're, you know, the, the Christianity. Well, if Christ had a church, it'd be the biggest one. No, uh, Christ's church, the body of Christ is the smallest and is despised. Especially by the religionists. Especially by Christianity. And again, a great example. King James Bible believing Christianity, which has made itself of the number. But see, those guys are so proud of themselves, they don't even want to see that because they put men on pedestals. And you've made yourselves of the number. You did exactly what certain person harped on the Holy ah, Pete Ruckman for it. You did the exact same thing. You did. Why? How? Chris, King James Bible believing Christianity is just another denomination. What's the catalyst there? Jeremiah 23, 16 on the 28. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said, you shall have peace. Free grace, you shall have peace. Don't worry about it. You just saved yourself by your own belief. Go on sinning. The more you sin, the better it is for you, actually. And, and, and Franklin, shut up. That's exactly what you preach and believe. Okay? That is exactly what you do. So shut up. Okay? And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. I'm free to do this because I, hey, all things are lawful for me. So, hey, I'll just go and do it. Hey, the more I do, the better it is for me. We're not under. You don't even have to keep the morality of the law, the moral principle of the law. 
We're not under any law. Yeah, we're law unto ourselves. <laughs> oh boy. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. They ran. They want to be. And they say, well, it's for the glory of God. Yeah, the glory of God for the expense of what? That you be known, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You give me a break, pal. Give me a break. You so, you pompous, arrogant. You, you know, you give me a break. Who you think? You know, you gotta smell what you're shoveling. Shoveling yourself. Make me great so you can. No. 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 See, a mark of a false prophet. Once the limelight. Saint. Even though deep down they already know the answer to the question. They don't want to go out of fear that they might be doing something wrong. They don't want to go out of fear because they're afraid. They, they take Jeremiah, James 3, 1 and 2 on to heart. They want to do what the Lord wants them to do. And they have no confidence in themselves. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. They have to get out of the boat. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from the evil, from the turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doing. Hmm. Am I a God at hand? saith the Lord, and not a God far off? <laughs> Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord, do not I fill heaven and earth? Saith the Lord. See, this is what happens when you try to box God into a three-person <laughs> trinity. Okay? Well, how can Jesus be the Father and pray to the Father? Our oh, God is bigger. Uh, what does that say? <laughs> well, uh, do not I fill heaven and earth? Fill heaven and earth. And that, that ain't Phil Robinson either, brother. Okay? Phil, God is a spirit. He is a lot bigger than we can even possibly fathom. But yet, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The Father, the Mashiach, our Lord and Savior. See, when you put God into a three-person box, come on, God is bigger. Fill heaven. Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. We're not even microscopic in scope of God. But yet, Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one in essence. There are three persons. Yeah. I have heard what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Pentecostal. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Holy place. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. You trust your heart, don't you? Huh? 
was Chris what does Christianity tell you? <laughs> what does, come on, Christian. Trust your heart. Uh, Proverbs 28, verse uh, 25 and 26. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. No room for two. But whosoever walketh wisely shall be delivered. You trust in your own heart. You're a fool. The fool says in his heart there is no God. You are your own standard. Okay? No room for two. Okay? No room for two. Okay? Verse 26 again in Jeremiah 23. How long uh, shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own hearts, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. <laughs> let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they both will fall into the ditch. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat? Saith the Lord. You see, it's about this word of the Lord. And, and see, when you get to a point in your ministry where you no longer focus on that, but bank on, well, I've already done this, been there, done that, so I don't need to keep it fresh to remind you of, hey to speak the same thing on to you is not grievous but I've been there done that I don't need to do that I can I can just you know I can hey I've been there done that I'll put my put my feet up like that and just and just take my knees you know and what does the Lord say to that you fool tonight thy soul shall be required of thee and all that stuff all that stuff of yours, huh? Yeah. 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 Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four. Verses one on verse four. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. When you don't rightly divide the word of truth, you're handling the word of God deceitfully. Perfect example. Open-air preacher. Perfect example. The free gracers. The reverse. See, trying to make Salvific doctrine in a certain dispensation uh, pertinent to every dispensation, that's handling the word of God deceitfully. See, guys like Open Air Preacher, Mark the Messenger, uh, Ray Comfort, Paul Washer, and stuff like that, you know, got it works. They take stuff from the Old Testament and try to make it salvific, pertinent doctrine for today. That's handling the word of God deceitfully. Okay? Free gracers. By grace through faith, which they don't believe in themselves. Okay? They take that and try to affix it to the... <laughs> come on, stupid. <laughs> the Garden of Eden. Patriarchal period. Similar, but different. The law. <laughs> the time of Jacob's trouble. Which is the, the main focus for those guys. So that all you lovely Christians who get left behind and get duped for just believe and receive, and you take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. But see, at the second coming, that theology, just like all of the false theology, will be done away with when Rome is defeated. Okay? And then the kingdom of heaven will be there. 
Okay? <laughs> and again, another example. The free grace that tells you it's by grace of faith in the kingdom of heaven. I, that, that, I mean, how are you, I mean, I know how. But it's like, how are you able to deceive people with that one? I mean, you read <laughs> the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? <laughs> All right? You read uh, Matthew 25. Okay, how? How in the world? People want that. People want that. See, that's handling the word of God deceitfully. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this quail hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Because what did Satan say in the Garden of Eden? You disobey and do contrary to what God said, then your eyes will be open. So it's not a blindness of actual sight. It's a blindness of the mind. Remember, the blind guy saw that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, that he's the Messiah. And he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Stop. But then the Pharisees are like, are we blind too? Because you say you see, your sin remaineth. But because the one guy said that he, you know, he didn't see, therefore, you know, I've just bread eyes that, but the point is, Christianity claims sight, but their minds are blinded. Because yeah. they don't want it. It's like the one guy in the last video. I I, I was cordial to that guy because the, the open air preacher um, disciples really irritate me. But this guy, the one he said in the video about some guy who also preaches sinless perfection, and the one brother mentioned it's like, yeah, the one, no, he doesn't reject it, he attacks it. Then I put my two, so yeah, and this one guy called open air preacher, a man of God, and you're right, I am a wretched man. But it's like, dude, what's wrong with you? Scripture proves open air each preacher a lying devil heretic. But no. You want to boast yourself, see. Boasting of self. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. Verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Brother, son, if anything for your question, it's verse 5 right there. See, you already know this. And that, praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. And in his time, if it's not this, it's something else. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation, son. But see, that's it. Most of the Christians preach themselves through the Lord. We saints preach the Lord through vessels meet for his use. We take no glory for it. Okay? Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth. A stranger, and not thine own lips. That's how that works. But when you start, you know, wow, I, yeah, I, look at what I've... Is not this great Babylon that I've created for the power of my glory? And then Nebuchadnezzar's mind got messed up and he thought he was what? An animal. <laughs> and see, also, okay, verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. 1 John 5, 4 and 6. Oh, no. 1 John 4, 5 and 6. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth. And the spirit of error. No. We saints know something. We know something. Why? Because we know him. He knows us. I don't like cold coffee. (laughs) 
Jude. 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 10 on the 13. But these speak evil of thing of those things which they know not. Relational. Because they know a lot. The relational know. Okay? But what they know naturally proves it right there. As brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the flesh. Erred, uh, they have erred. Instead of, uh, instead of misquoting that, let's read it. <laughs> Oh, where is that? First Timothy six. Uh, where, uh, verse ten: For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Back in Jude, woe unto them, for they have ran, gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam. For reward. And perished in the gainsaying of Corey. Reward. Praise of men. Subscribers. Possessions. Money. These are spots in your feasts of charity. Self-sacrifice. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars in whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. See, you got to remember, though, Psalm 90. Psalm 90. There are other verses that we could go to the, this, but this, I think, was one that was illustrative fair enough. Jerk Hiles, lost devil. He was in ministry for years and years and years and years and years. But what kept him going? Well, he was working for Satan. But it was all flesh-driven. Okay? Kent Helvin. He's a Jesuit. Okay? He's still going, even though he's, he, you know, his, his, you know, his dirty laundry is out there for everybody, and you know, <laughs> he's he's a joke, but he's a Jesuit, but he's still going. What's keeping him going? Well, Satan. Yes. What does Satan operate in? For thou savorest the things that be of man and not of God. Flesh. Remember, Satan was cursed to worm around on the earth and eat dust. We're made of dust. So when you see these Christians, John MacArthur, that guy's been going on for decades. He's a devil. He even wrote his own Bible, which his Jesuit brother, Jesuit James White, you know, praises. Is John MacArthur a Jesuit? I don't, is he a Freemason? I think so. Remember, the Jesuits control the Freemasons. But Psalm 90. Verses 8 and 12. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. <laughs> yeah, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. <laughs> yeah. The days of our years are three score years and ten. Eighty or seventy. Three score, two, four, six, and ten. Seventy. Seventy. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, eighty. Yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. And again, again, um, <laughs> I'd, yeah, I'd like to 
Yeah, and it, for the redemption of the purchased possession. I even thought that for a while. Uh, uh, no. No. Anyway. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. Man, they themselves, flesh is what's keeping it going. What we open up with, okay? Thaddeus in the time of, um, Judas in the time of the taxing, okay? The Maccabean revolt was not something of God. If it was, then what continued? But what was that? Fleshly driven, driven by a man. That's why you see John MacArthur still today. Because he works for Satan. And Satan is all about flesh. Okay? That's why Kent Helvin, of all people, is still going today. He works for Rome. He's a Jesuit. He's of Satan. Satan's all about flesh. That's all Kent Helvin is about. And all the heretics and all the false open-air preacher. Apparently, he's been doing this for quite a bit, years and years and years and years as well. You say you stop sinning? You're a liar. You're full of pride and you're calling yourself a god. I have no sympathy or pity for any of you people who deliberately fall for that man's teachings. I have no sympathy or pity for you. Okay? When you got when free gracers can refute that guy simply, that, that it's no, you, no. I have no sympathy for you people, you disciples of open air preacher. I have no sympathy for you. I don't. You want to believe that stuff? That's your problem. You got somewhere hot that's waiting for you. Okay, the truth is out there to be heard. You don't want to hear it. Hey, roll up another one. God loves you. And have a good time and enjoy yourself because this is your best life now. By reason of strength. Whose strength? Our power, our strength is Jesus Christ. These guys, oh, nay, nay. It's themselves. It's yourself by your own belief, dude, right? Galatians 1. Galatians 1, verses 10 and 12. Not Corinthians, but I overshot that one a little bit. Galatians 1, 10 and 12. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Man pleasing videos. Keeping your videos within a time frame where the analytic will show you that's the level of what people will watch. Shrewd. The average watch time, uh, the analytics for the videos that the Lord gives here, is about 17 minutes. Now, if I wanted to grow a ministry, if I wanted to get lots of people, if I wanted to be loved, what would I do? I would shorten the videos to play it, to make it fit, with the attention span according to the analytics. You've noticed, I'm sure. That's not what happened. Look, we're almost at two hours now. Think I give a rat's rear end about that? I don't. You know why? Because I'm not what this is about. Well, I've been there, done that. Good for you. Good for you. See, it's not about pleasing men. It's not. You are told what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. It's like uh, Nick, uh, the, the hooker guy. He's not a hooker. That's his channel name. Who's gone incognito. And uh, Nick, if you ever... I, yeah, you probably won't, but, you know, telling him what he needed to hear, not what he wants to hear. That's what God does. God tells you what you need to hear. And when you want what you need to hear, it becomes a glory. But if you don't want what you, don't, what you need to hear, 
gnash on, on you with the teeth, and the heart gets cut, not pricked. Yeah. 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 So you do things to work within the frame of what the analytic tells you about what the attention span is on an average. Like I said, the average duration of the videos that the Lord has given your servant here on the channel that he has given is 17 minutes. <laughs> And there are, uh, as one guy said, you know, gone for five days. One brother uh, said, it's like gone for five days and you come back with an epic. <laughs> it's like, oh, thanks, brother. Okay. But uh, there again, you know. So what am I, so what? In order to get popular, I'm going to shorten it to placate to what the analytics says of what the people are watching? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Your videos are too long. Oh, boo -hoo. Who has time for that? You know, when you stand at the great white throne of judgment, you're going to wish that you had some of that time back. You're going to wish that you took a little bit of time to consider the truth of the matter. No, you got to move, you got to move, you got to keep moving. You know, who has time for that? You know, nobody wants to hear that. Remember, uh, Paul preached until midnight and into the morning, and the one dude fell out of the loft dead, and Paul's like, come on, brought him back to life, and said, let's go. Well, Brad, I don't like your voice. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that. I'll give you that, okay, sure. But the point is, you know, much study is weariness of the flesh. I'm not here to please you. The Lord is, the Lord has called me that he may feed you through scripture. I have nothing to do with it except being here. And choosing to do what he says. Because you have to make the right choice after all. Because, Mr. Dudley Do Right, God doesn't force you. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the res revelation of Jesus Christ. And hey, just believe and receive, that's of man. Who doesn't want to have that, right? Hey, you can eat a cookie and drink some wine and go tell a, a Jesuit priest all the stuff and then get out of jail free card. Hey, who doesn't want that, right? Hey, the color of your uh, skin guarantees you a place in God. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to boast themselves, right? That, hey, I speak in tongues. Hey, I can, uh, I've cast out demons. <laughs> Who doesn't want that, right? <clears throat> I don't. Neither does a saint. Neither does a saint. Hebrews. Hebrews 5. One on five. How, oh Brad, how will I know? I think we've already answered it, son. And you know. I know you know. But maybe this is just the what you needed to hear. Who knows? It's between you and him. But let's continue. Hebrews 5, 1 on 5. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained of for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, 
Again, you sinless perfection idiots. Okay? <laughs> For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof, he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. Uh, again, I, I have zero sympathy for you people who are willfully deceived by open-air preacher. I have no sympathy for you. Scripture is against your little guy there, that little fart. Prove it! Against your little guy, whatever his name is. You just want to boast yourselves. That's all it is. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. Charity, self-sacrifice, the mind of Christ. The mind of a servant, the mind of Christ. Mind of Christ. That of a servant. That of a servant. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. The Lord will do the testifying of you. The Lord will show you whether or not it's what he wants you to do, son. But you got to get out of the boat. Examples. Exodus chapter 3. Hey, you want a Greek? You want a Greek? Apostolos. In a Greek, apostolos, the root of apostolos is what? Sent one. From a Greek. Notice I'm not saying the Greek anymore. A Greek. I was corrected on that pretty gently it's like you know brad you're 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 you know you're going off on this but you yourself are saying the greek right and what's what do i you know which one so a greek thank you exodus 3 7 on 12 and the lord said I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, task for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore... Behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. I will send thee that thou, the Lord doing it through Moses, not Moses doing it through the Lord. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? What are we reading to? Verse 12. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. When the thing come to pass, and it's of no strength of your own. Hmm? Exodus 4, 10 and 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, O Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since Thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, 
or the seen, or the blind, have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be thy, with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Be with thy mouth. Now, there were times when Moses spake unadvisedly. For example, the rock. He smote it once, and the waters gushed out. But then he got angry. It's like, here, you rebels, shall we smite this rock again for you? So he smites the rock again, twice. Okay? I will be with thy mouth. Meaning, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you what I want you to say. What I want you to say. What is the chaff to the wheat? Where are we? Okay. Numbers. Numbers 13. Numbers 13. Children of Israel brought out of Egypt. The Lord was going to give them the promised land. There it is. Go get it. I'll be with you. Go get it. It's over there. Don't worry about this stuff. I'm with you. I will be with you. Get out the boat. Go get it. Verses 1. On the three. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. I give. He's going to give it to them. He promised it to them. That's your land. I'm going to give it to you. But see, they had to believe the Lord that he was going to do what he was going to do. Go get it. I'm going to be with you. How will I know? Well, you certainly ain't going to know if you're just sitting on your hands, are you? Or something drastic might happen in order, you know, like, uh, you know, the persecution that came to the body of Christ in Acts. You know, it, it's, it's safe to say that unless the Lord sent, hey, you know, I told you guys to go out and... <laughs> go out and preach but you're all staying here at Jerusalem so I'm going to allow some persecution to go come so you guys will go you know you read about that in the book of Acts it, you can safely say that unless the Lord had sent a little persecution they would have probably hunkered down and stayed there for who knows how long the Lord's like no you, you go preach me onto all the nations. So get out. Go. Come on. Come on. Okay. Here's a little persecution. Go. Of every tribe of their fathers shall you send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. Now we already covered this in Deuteronomy. The thing that he said will come to pass. Hmm? So what was the Lord doing by wanting men to go out there? When he already said, I'm going to give it to you. But yet the Lord wanted Moses to send people out. Why? So that they can be proved to themselves. What? Whether or not they love the Lord. Because what happened? See, and what happens is, in uh, uh, Proverbs 29... 12 on 14. Proverbs 29, 12 on 14. Come on. Wow. Come on. Come on. Proverbs 29, 12 on 14. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. Now go back to Numbers 26 on 33 in chapter 13. 
And they went and came to Moses. These guys went out. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and shewed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. So yeah, it's a, yeah, the land floweth with milk and honey. Okay? This is what the Lord promised us. The ruler hearkened to lies. Nevertheless, ah, you know what that is? You know what we call that? Yea, hath God said. Or but. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Ankh there. So God said, promise them. That, that's the promised land. I won't give you that. Go get it. Before we do that, send out some people to go check it. See, the Lord was the Lord said this. Why? The Lord knew this was going to happen. The Lord knew this was going to happen. So he, to show Moses and the other people, there in it, the Lord knew what was going to happen. And the Lord knew, knows the beginning from the end. Why did he do it like this? To reveal unto them where their heart was. It wasn't with the Lord. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Insurmountable. <laughs> you know, it's like only God can pull that off. Only God can pull that off. But see, yea, hath God said. See, they didn't see the forest for the trees. They only saw that one aspect. They didn't have faith in the God who is, who said what he said, and he was going to do what he said. But see, they got distracted. They, they, chose to believe what they saw instead of having faith on that which they could not see immediately. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Yes, because the Lord was going to be with them. So Caleb's like, shut up! <laughs> the Lord, hey, I asked for me and my house. The Lord said, we, he's going to do it. All we got to do is go in there and get it. Let's go! Come on! But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And you know what? Verse 31, they were right. They were right! They were absolutely right. But see, that shows you. Caleb is like, we are well able to overcome it. Not they themselves, but the Lord through them. See how that works? They were right. But see, the only way it was going to be possible, the Lord doing it through them. I'm, I'm going to give you that line. Chill, trust me, go get it. And watch what I'm going to do through you. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Ankh, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Interesting, because that's what they made the God who is out to be in this context. They made the God who is, who said to them, there it is, go get it, I'm with you, don't worry about it, Caleb, come on, we the Lord's on our side. Nevertheless, yeah, God said. 
But the men yep. got set. They, in fact, made God the grasshopper. Little grasshopper. Hmm. Numbers 14, 20 under 25. They blew it. They absolutely blew it. Numbers 14, 20 under 25. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word, because Moses interceded. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit, or case S, with him, and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land where into he went, and his seed shall possess it. Hmm. 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 And, and we're going to just read, uh, let's read 25 as well. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley, dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And see what happened was, they blew it. Just read it. But the children of Israel presumptuously were like, okay, fine. We, were, we sinned. We're going to go and get it. And the Lord's like, no, you blew that. That chance is gone. It is written. Okay. It is written. Look now at verse, uh, where are we? 34. After the number of the days in which he searched the land, even 40 days, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. God promised them, but because they didn't believe him, he went against his own promise for forty years to chasten Israel because these people wouldn't believe on him. It's not that they did it. No. The Lord did that whole thing to show them, hey, you don't trust me. The impossible was right there. And they were right. They were, they were more than they, bigger than they, yes. But, hey, the Lord said, that's enough for me. Let's do it. Let's do it. You get it? You get it. You get it. Amos 7. Amos 7. There, there's a whole bunch of these that we could look at. But uh, just, you know, just, like I said, I didn't forget. You, you thought I forgot. I know. I know. I know, brother. I know. Amos 7, 10 under 17. <clears throat> then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jero, Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Isaiah. The land is not able to bear all his words. That's what they say of us. For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread, and prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Right there. We don't want to hear it. Go elsewhere. We just don't want to hear it. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was an herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. Not a gunpoint. Go. Now therefore hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, prophesy not against Israel. And drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore thus saith the Lord. 
Thy wife shall be an harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by line. Thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. See, what we saints preach is contrary to what you guys think Christianity is supposed to be. See, what we saints preach and exemplify and live by is totally contrary to what Christianity is. And all it's divided whatever. You're not going to be popular, son. You know that. You know that. I say that in a general sense. Not just for you, dear brother. But, uh, you know, that, you know, popular preachers doesn't mean that they're all lost. But see, you get taken up in your own thing. And the evidence is there for these guys without, I mean, I mean, it's just abundant. Have you forgotten the day of small beginnings? Hmm? Do you realize, do you remember that we're, we're small and despised, but yet you want to make yourself of the number? To make credible unto the world something that the world rejects? It, it, it makes no sense. That's what Christianity does. Corinthians chapter 1. 26. On to 31. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many... Doesn't say none, not many. Wise men after the flesh. Not many mighty, not many noble are called. Says not many. Doesn't say that not any. Doesn't say not any. Says not many. Why? Because, like we've discussed, those wise men after the flesh, mighty men after the flesh, noble, they have that that they can fall upon instead of a dependence. See, self-sufficiency over dependence. Preaching your past merits rather than a daily dependence. That's it. I told you over the phone, brother. You're banking on your merits of yesterday rather than a daily dependence. And this has nothing to do with salvation. Okay? We're talking about, you know, our walk with the Lord. Okay? We're once saved, always saved. But if you are banking on what you have done instead of a daily dependence on the Lord, and we're not talking about salvation, okay? But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the, the wise. And saints are foolish, according to the world. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Because the mighty, hey, a wise man, a mighty man, a noble man, they can be saved. The impossible is possible with God. They can be put in that. But see, the problem is the dependence. They can fall. Well, I'm noble. I'm wise. I'm mighty. Saints like us, I got nothing. What am I going to do? I can't do this. I, I, I'm not even in good health. I, 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 I don't even know if I'm going to be able to pay the rent or put food on the table. I, I, Lord, I, I, I have nothing. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. have a multitude of houses, Mr. McCarthy, all your cars, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the base things of the world. But, you know, the world would see that, you know, one of these Christian pastors have like two, three houses, one in Bermuda, one in 
uh, you know, one in California and over there and all these vacation houses and cars up the, you know, and the, all this stuff. And the world's like, hey, look at that. Huh? Christian preaching is quite a lucrative um, profession, isn't it? Yeah. Trying to justify yourself in the sight of the world so they might take you seriously. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Here, I'm going to drop the mic. Okay. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. See, son, here's, here's the thing. This is, what, this is what I am on guard with. And this is what you are on guard with. Uh, any of you. Um, John 5. 44. One verse. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Luke 16, 15. Luke 16, 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. How can ye believe? You like to have your bro hugs and you have your little disciples, huh? Yeah, how can you believe? Those things about, look at me, look at how successful I am. Yeah. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. You've done well for yourself, Christian preacher. Yeah, you've got the, you got the fame, you've got the notoriety, you've got the glory, you've got the properties, you've got the servants, you've got the vehicles, you've got all this. The world looks at that and like, you've done well for yourself. John 12, 43. Then we'll be done. For they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. <sighs> Son, I, I, I hope that answers your question for you. I, I hope so. Like I said, though, um, you already know. But hopefully this was just what you needed to hear. To help, you know, to do or whatever, that the Lord be glorified through you. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, and uh, again, brethren, I, I, I gotta. <laughs> there will come a video this week, um, Lord willing, where we address the president. Trump was the worst choice out of the two. Can you imagine that? Kamala Harris was the lesser of the two evils after all? Wow. Oh boy. Oh boy. What awaits us here in America, right? Anyways, thank you for watching if you do. Thank you for your patience, brethren. Brother, we're praying for you. Um, we're praying for all you brethren. Uh, I love you and Lord willing. See you in the next video. Bye.